Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Scott's Comics Retro Review. And I realize that's a mouthful. So um, you can shorten it if you want. You can shorten it to SCRR, SCRR, uh, whatever you feel you need to do. <laughs> In either case, um, this, this channel is dedicated to uh, those who want to get into reading comics but don't know where to begin or those who are reading comics but just haven't read the books that I am currently reviewing. And uh, I was, uh, if you've been following along, and if you haven't, if this is your first one, I suggest you go back to the beginning and come across this kind of a method to my madness. I am currently uh, reviewing uh, Superman, who's my fourth favorite superhero. And he, uh, he's a, to me, he's a great character. The thing is, is that in my opinion, not everyone does him correctly. But it was John Byrne who got me to actually collect Superman for a, an extended period of time. Uh, and since then, I've gotten on when people have uh, picked up the reins to, you know, start working on the book. In either case, um, I was going through, I, I said in, in the previous videos that Superman is... Uh, the history of Superman is the history of comics, and I was I was kind of at the Silver Age when I stopped, um, be, mostly because this is when I start getting into buying comics. Now I got into comics because as a kid I would watch uh, TV, <laughs> I would watch the Adam West Batman and the George Reeves Superman, and it was also the Saturday morning cartoon that had uh, the Superman Batman Adventure Hour. I also vaguely, as a kid, remember the Flesher Studios. Uh, they had Superman shorts from the 40s. And I vaguely remember seeing those as, as a much younger kid. So anyway, um, what happened was, is as I started getting older, my, my dad, who works for the airline, he would, you know, he would bring the paper home, you know, from work. And also, there was a lost and found. And after 30 days, anyone could kind of take what was out of there. And I'm sure, you know, there were other fathers working there, too, who also took comics. But my dad used to bring home comics and the newspaper. And in the newspapers, I used to read the comic strips, and then I used to read the comics there. And then I kind of equated the TV show with the comic strips. I remember I was about five years old. <laughs> so, so for me, that was a, a pretty big revelation. In either case, as I get older, as time goes on, I end up... Um, getting allowance and now I could spend it on things and what I ended up spending it on was comic books <laughs> and I never really collected Superman even though I love the TV show um, he will in the TV show he's kind of powered down and he was actually based on the golden age Superman who wasn't as powerful as the silver age which is the comic books that were being made at the time I started buying like towards the end of the Silver Age, so it's not like I was there for the whole thing. But Superman being so powerful that he would do things like, you know, a bad guy uh, would, I'm sorry, I didn't want to tell that story yet. <laughs> he would do things like his cape was dirty, so he'd fly through the sun in order to clean it. And um, he would also, uh, like a bad guy would hold a gun to Lois Lane's head, and instead of him just using his super speed to zoom over there and take the gun out of uh, the guy's hand, he would literally travel into the past uh, while the bad guy was holding the gun to Lois's head. He'd have an adventure in the past and do something to the gun and then come back to the present and say, go ahead and pull the trigger. And then when they pulled the trigger, um, <laughs> the gun wouldn't f work right. It would misfire. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, that way you would have a cover and the cover would show like the bad guy. I'm, I'm making this up. This never happened. But the gun would show like the bad guy holding a gun to Lois Lane's head. And Superman would be saying, ah, go ahead and fire the gun. It's those kinds of things. But I did buy issues. And I no longer have them. So I'm just showing you here what I pulled up. This is like one that I bought off the stands when I was a kid. So I thought it was cool. Superman fighting for the time. And uh, here's another one. Superman, there's uh, disasters going on around the train the building on fire, the person getting shot, the plane crashing, and Superman's just walking by with Lois Lane, ignoring it all, and uh, Lois Lane's calling him Clark Kent. <laughs> then here's one where he's surrounded by all of his major bad guys, but his suit is empty. 
uh, and these are things I'm like, well, what happened? How does this happen? And I would end up buying the book for that. This guy Vortex was a superhero in another world. And he's saying that Superman killed his wife. So now he's coming to kill Super, uh, Lois Lane. I'm like, what's going on? So I, these are the things I had to buy. Uh, I was in love with um, Yvonne Craig, Batgirl from the Adam West Batman TV series. So when she showed up here and she's falling to her death and she's telling Superman she doesn't want to help, I, I bought the book. Um, here's another one. We've got Terra Man, who is, a, uh, I think, a very underused villain. Uh, but... DC used to do this, 100 pages for only 60 cents. But these stories here were generally reprints, and this was the new story. Um, then we have uh, here, he's fighting a guy called Captain Thunder. Now, DC owned the rights to uh, Captain Marvel, who we now know of as Shazam. Uh, legally, um, DC can't call him Captain Marvel. But uh, as a kid, I knew him as Shazam, the original Captain Marvel. And... Um, they're fighting, and I never knew why they couldn't get them together to fight. That didn't happen until the 90s, so like 30 years later, uh, uh, 20 years later, after this issue. <laughs> then we have this, where I was a kid going, wow, Superman, so far in the future, 2001, that's way in the future. Yeah, the, the year 2000 was a long way off from me when I was a kid. <laughs> anyway, these are the types of books that I bought. And... Uh, I would just buy single issues. I wouldn't collect them. But it was John Byrne who got me to actually collect the book. And in this particular trade, I want to, um, again, they, for some reason, they've got the covers in the back. I don't know if they, when they reprinted the trade, if they continued doing that. Um, but uh, the first adventure is uh, Superman uh, meeting the Joker for the first time in this uh, post-crisis universe. Now, I had mentioned earlier that there was an event called uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and this redid everything. And uh, this would be the first time that Superman is meeting Joker in this new universe, this new continuity. Uh, and that was interesting, but I wanted to show you the editors here. It says uh, Andrew Helfer and uh, Michael Carlin. And here's the reason why editors are very important to books. We were, at this time, we were having one editor leave and another editor come in. And editors can fix stories. That's what they're there for. It's one of the reasons they're there for. Uh, but what happens is we have, I don't want to give away too much towards the end there, but um, we have, they're all standing around and Joker's in the hands of the police, right? Then we go to the next issue, which is uh, Adventures of Superman. It's... Uh, it's this one right here, The Adventures of Superman. By the way, look at that beautiful Jerry Ordway artwork. Anyway, what happens is, is that you see Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen, and uh, there's a fire in a building. And they kind of, uh, you know, Lois runs in, and then all of a sudden Superman shows up, and he's saying that he had issues with the Joker. <laughs> I don't know what issues. <laughs> see, I think that was an error. They, they, uh, this team knew that uh, Superman was going to uh, face off against the Joker, but they didn't know the details. So they went ahead and did this story, which was a good story. The only problem is that the continuity between the two issues didn't flow so well. And in, in a later issue, I'm going to show you what I mean by when they do flow well. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you real quick was uh, these are the new gods. Uh, Action Comics was a series that John Byrne both wrote and drew. And it was him teaming up Superman with other members of the DC Universe. And he loves Jack Kirby, much like I do. And this was, he must have been really excited and really happy working on these characters. These are the new gods that were created by um, Jack Kirby when he came to DC. So in the, f the first issue, it's Superman and Big Barda. And the second issue is Superman and Mr. Miracle. Now, I wanted to show you this because there, there has been some controversy about this. <laughs> and in, in some ways, I think that um, editors kind of need to tell uh, artists, even superstar artists and writers, no. Um, and it's not that the story was bad, but it's because it goes into an area that it probably shouldn't go into. In, in either case, look at this. Barda is looking beautiful. And here's another beautiful scene. Look at John Byrne's artwork. He... he uh, truly one of the greats um 
And what happens is, is that this guy tries to get Barda to pimp for him and she tosses him away. And while she's distracted with that, this druggie grabs her purse and runs. And she gives chase. And she gives chase for a reason. And it's not just a purse, but <laughs> it's what I'm trying to say. So she chases him down, right? Beautiful artwork. And this guy gets caught by this guy. And then he grabs the purse and he realizes that uh, that's a, a power. That's all of Barter's power. And he obviously knows something that we don't know anything about him, about this character. In either case, uh, she switches to her big Barter outfit, but she's getting zapped by her power rod that he has. And she gets beaten. Look at that beautiful artwork by John Brady. Anyway, we switch over to Clark Kent, and he's investigating a story that has something to do with what's going on within the, uh, the pages of this. So it does have something to do with the story, but I don't want to get into it too much. But what happens is um, Superman shows up to save the day, and uh, him and Bart a fight. And I don't want to give away too much, but um, it doesn't go well for e either Bart or Superman. <laughs> Anyway, the next issue has Mr. Miracle in it. And Mr. Miracle, um, he's got uh, Darkseid shows up and shows him a videotape. And they're shocked. And they mentioned that it's Barda on the tape. And later on, we see uh, Mr. Miracle's trying to track things down. But I want to show you this real quick. This guy is saying, you mean I can use Superman in my films? So what that means is, up until this point... They haven't been in any films together yet. Or Superman hasn't been in any films. Only Barter in that one that you know was shown to the, the producer. So Scott tracks them down, right? And here they are. It looks like they're about to make a movie, a rather sleazy movie. And, you know, Mr. Miracle interrupts. And I don't want to give away too much, but people kind of point to this panel and say, look, Superman and Barter got together. But anyone with any kind of comprehension, reading comprehension, could see there was no way they got together yet. Uh, but in either case, uh, I think it's sometimes you need to kind of tell people that uh, having heroes make a porno, it's, <laughs> it's not really, even though they didn't say anything, it was kind of subvertly suggested. Um, you probably shouldn't, should just steer away from that. And that character sleaze really was sleazy. <laughs> Which was a good job on Byrne's part. And the last thing I want to talk about with this is that um, as Mr. Byrne was going through his whole series, he was taking old characters and he was uh, updating them. Villains, in other words. And in this particular case, he was also doing a visual pun. Uh, like a verbal pun would be if somebody trips and you say, uh, did you have a nice trip? See you next fall. You're kind of playing around with the meaning of the words. <laughs> and this was what's known as a visual pun. He was poking fun at um, Jim Shooter and the character called the Beyonder from the Secret Wars that John Byrne was kind of forced to get involved in, even though he didn't want to. And this character here is, is sort of a visual pun of, <laughs> of the Beyonder. <laughs> and it turns out that the person that he's, he's, a, he's with against in this is Mixie Pitalik. And this is what Mixie Pitalik looks like. And he's an imp from the fifth dimension. And he has uh, fifth dimensional science. And because we are only in three dimensions, we can't understand it. It looks like magic to us. And he does things like this um, and things like this. And Superman's got to get his way out of it. Anyway, it's a, it's a great book. Uh, besides the controversy that came up, it... Uh, I, I thrilled to no end reading this book, and I was so glad that Mr. Byrne did it. Anyway, I just I wanted to wrap it up for this time, and uh, please come back for the next video. I'm going to make a, a couple of more videos with uh, John, reviewing John Byrne's uh, run on Superman. And thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.